So now the next diagram which is important as I told you is the structure of anther. The question what they'll ask in examination is draw and explain TS of anther or draw and explain TS of microsporangium. Both question is one and the same. Both in CBSC as well as in state syllabus, this particular diagram, all the diagrams what we will teach will be important. Okay? So how to draw TS of an anther? The very first thing is you need to draw a butterfly like structure. See, as I told you in the previous diagram, that is structure of a flower. Okay? We took that bilobed anther, then we are taking cross section of this anther and then observing under microscope. How does this anther look like? Okay? It looks like a butterfly like structure. This is a single layer what I have drawn. After you draw one butterfly like structure, from inside draw another layer like this, right parallel to the previous one. Okay? Make sure that you are drawing parallel lines and all these diagrams should be freehand. Once you start moving your pencil, it should be continuous. Okay. One layer from inside and one layer from outside. So one more layer on top. Okay. We have totally drawn three lines. And with this, we will add tapetum layer, which looks more like a donut. And then we will add one bindia to this particular butterfly. This is complete structure of an anther. But if you just draw the diagram and you don't label it, you don't get marks. The labeling is very important in diagrams. The outermost wall layer is known as epidermis. Now, how to write it in examination? Once you draw this diagram, you will write general characters of anther. That is, a typical anther is bilobed, dithecus, tetrasporangiate. I'll write it here. A typical anther is bilobed, Bilobed means it has got two lobes. Like if you keep your two fingers together, this is how an anther looks like. Okay, bilobed. And dithecus, each lobe has got a theca layer. Theca is a layer from where separation or dehiscence of anther will happen. It is usually at this particular point. This side it is one theca, the other side is another theca. One side, two theca. To so dithecus. And how many spore bags are there? One, two, three. Four. So it is tetrasporangiate. Okay, okay. Now, moving ahead further, as I told you, first dialogue that you will write is a typical anther is bilobed, dithecus, tetrasporangiate. And the cross section will show you following structures. That is, outermost wall layer is epidermis. So what you will do is you will write epidermis as a side heading. And then write in front of it that this particular layer is meant for what? Protection. Because it is outermost wall layer. It will provide protection. It's going to protect inner mast cells. And then what would be the nature? How does this cell look like? They are rectangular in shape. You can add another point over there. So outermost wall layer is the first point. Second point is it provides protection. Third point is it contains barrel shaped cells or rectangular shaped cells. Take next. You'll write the layer which is beneath epidermis, we call it as endothecium. What is endothecium? This is a layer which is present beneath epidermis, first point. Second point is, it has specialized cells which help in dehiscence of anther. Okay, they help in dehiscence of anther. Dehiscence means breaking. So these are the cells which will help in breaking of anther because they have hygroscopic property. Then followed by that we have middle layer.
Now, middle layer is about two to five or three to five cells layer. Okay, it is basically made up of parenchyma cells, and it helps in storage of food and water. Okay, so middle layer is about three to five layers of parenchyma cells, which are present right from here, from endothelium till tapetum. This entire region, this entire region will have middle layer cells. Okay, they are the ones who will help in storage of food and water. Then we have the innermost wall layer. We call it as tapetum. Now, when I take neat classes, I elaborate about tapetum quite a lot because there are many points that we can include. But if I have to stick on to NCERT because for boards there is nothing being asked out of NCERT, so tapetum is innermost wall layer. Point number one. Point number two. This particular layer provides nourishment to anther. Oh, sorry, nourishment to sporogenous tissue. Nourishment. to sporogenous tissue theek okay. hai then comes sporogenous tissue now it is this tissue which will actually help in formation of pollen grains so what you will do in examination is write side heading and then explanation side heading explanation this is how you have to write it you get full marks there is one more tissue this bindiya over here is known as connective name itself is telling you connective means the one which will connect connect what if this is a bilobed anther say if these are the two lobes of an anther bilobed it is connected to a filament the structure which is connecting filament and anther together is known as connective so that layer is been exposed over there so you can write connective is a tissue which will connect anther to that of a filament okay this is the most important diagram if i have to what you say give ranks or if i have to categorize it i will tell you that there are two diagrams which are very important for five marks one is ts of anther second one is what you say anatropous ovule 